This video is going to be about synth design and some simple MIDI part design as well. I'm going to use the one chord to two project. I'm going to get rid of this bass pattern and the melody pattern. And I'll just start off with the bass. Um, it's already got an instrument in there. I can use that just to get a pattern right. And after I have the pattern, then I can design the sound. Okay, so now he's got the notes here yet. To do delete this. Okay, we're gonna go with a in this first octave there, A1. And it's gonna have each note to be one eighth and they're happening in the second half of each quarter so that way you have a kick then the bass note kick then a bass note with this kick pattern anyway so. and the reason i picked a is because it's the handiest minor chord to create we've looked at it before it's all the white notes with a at the bottom okay now most bass sounds they have full thick thick low frequency sound to them to fill up the bottom end of the song but also they have like a pluck like a strum sound at the start like if i go to any other bass presets you probably hear the same thing well not all of them some of them will have crazy things going on and um, there's one here muted bass Get the pluck at the start. Okay, those are a little different, but it's this type of pluck sound I'm going for. Now, I'm going to get rid of the device that's in there. And I'll go and get my Tal Uno. Okay. Now, once we take a look at our synth diagram, we start with the oscillator, then we move on to the filter. Now the oscillator is on the tal you know, are the sawtooth, the square, which can be turned into a pulse, and the sub oscillator, which is another square, but it's a, an octave below. So let's just have a quick listen. I'm gonna move up the octave switch, so it's in the center. So the saw, yeah, as you can hear, it kind of has a raspy kind of sound in this octave. It's not really nice for a bass. Square wave, now I just better turn this off. Has that fullness, has a high component and a low component. Which gives it that body, and the body is what I want. So I can add a sub oscillator as well. not bad I might keep that so the next thing I move on to is the filter now to really get the best out of the filter you have to understand the ADSR envelope so if you go to my notes so these faders then decide what shape the offset contour for either the volume or the filter is going to be filter cutoff so it starts at whatever level the cutoff is set to. So, where are we? So if the cutoff is set to here, then the envelope's bottom will always be here. So with this, as you can see, we have a very fast attack. So it's easy, that's not quite straight up. It takes a little bit of time. And then a slower decay, which is the way it's set up at the moment. You see the slow decay. Now this will be good for the pluck because what we want is the filter to open and then close fairly rapidly, leaving a dark body to the sound. But in fact, this decay setting here is too slow because our note is only about that long. So unless we set the decay a bit shorter, it's just gonna sound like the filter is all the way open. 
Right, you'll hear what I mean now. See? No difference. If I make this, sh this faster... Now we're getting it. That's a bit better. Now, if I add resonance, it kind of adds emphasis. Okay, that's not bad. And I can add the chorus. It does something very specific that may suit your track, may not suit your track. Beyond that, it's the usual processing for bass sounds. Now, as regards the pattern, I'm going to switch this to something a little bit more less trancey. Now, that may suit the needs, suit the needs of your track, but let's just see if we can vary it. Okay, so what if instead of one big long note in the second half of this, we had two notes? And we could have it jumping around the scale a little bit. Oh, I'm doing F. Gotta listen. Okay, so it goes up, down. Do we want it to go up again? Maybe it'll have this part repeat. So it's nearly a mirror image, but not quite. We could go back to the sound. Now, what else could we do here with this? Let me think. We could set this keyboard on here, so this means the higher notes will have a more open filter than the lower notes. Okay. Now, so if that's a basic enough sound, what could we do to get some different varieties of bass sound? Okay, let's just play it here. Like. So if that's the basic bass sound that I had in mind, what could I do then just to try some different things? I was crying out for some longer notes, I think. Okay, let's go back to the synth. Let's try the pulse width. a nice techie kind of bass there already. Bring up the sub oscillator. Now the LFO is modulating this value here. See because that LFO is on, I can change it to the envelope. It's more controlled. Works well with the chorus, but don't feel stuck with this chorus. Let's get something and yeah, maybe not that one. Okay, that sounds interesting. Put back on the LFO. Speed up the LFO. Starting to get into darker territory now. The good thing about the ping pong delay is 
you can have the highs repeating while it'll leave the bass out in that nice and clean. And you can bring up the volume a little bit. Now, since we have these in place, we can start tweaking things while they're there. Too fast. Now we can set this so it follows the tempo. And if you wanted to modulate that, this value, Get rid of these. Okay. So if I was to make the same sound then with operator, I'm going to use one of these oscillators. I'm going to set it to square, which I do here. As you see, there's a few squares. They each sound a slight bit different. Now, off this again. If I want to hear the envelope, I click here. That's the volume envelope now. If I want the filter envelope, I gotta click this section. Now we're not hearing any of the filter yet. Now we're hearing it. Now, envelope percent. Would that be in a more obvious place? Yeah, you're probably right. What about some FM? Okay. At the moment all the other oscillators are modulating A. Now I can set. Side by side. 